Let's talk about anime with agendas. Yeah. So full disclosure, this is a panel that we've wanted to do for a while that is controversial enough that traditional conventions would often be a little worried about doing that because they they don't know that we're going to treat it with seriousness oh, and yeah. respect, and we're not just going to go off and and uh, and be wild with this. Um, so yeah, th these are anime that have interesting perspectives on them from the original mm -hmm. creators and such. Um, um, yeah, let's just get to it. Yeah. So, I mean, we were talking previously about interpretation of art. Um, mm -hmm. Some artists like, here's the thing, take from it what you will. Yeah. This is the opposite, where here's the thing, I want you to learn a thing from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Absolutely. There's a takeaway here. Mm -hmm. That is intended by the artist, and we're going to talk about that. And to further self-promote, if you're if you're going to Colossal East, you can feel free to submit some of these group ones too. Because True. well, actually, I could probably do it still. Mm. I don't know why I could, but uh, now that I know you might be going, this could be something mm. that we also do. At Colossal yeah, East. that's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, let us go in. So there's going to be kind of a, a group discussion, group chat, very free form. Mm -hmm. um, some of these things. Um, so we've got a couple different kind of topics we've organized these in, um, but obviously art is complicated. So mm -hmm. some of these things will kind of go across different topics. Mm -hmm. um, and we're using the term agenda here as kind of a general catch-all term. We can get go deep philosophically into mm -hmm. author's intent. And what do they actually mean by that? All that kind of stuff. We're going to kind of elide a lot of that and just kind of talk about things where it's like, we see a meaning here, um, and let's and let's kind of go as best as we can. And yeah, let's 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 go okay, to the okay. military okay. stuff. Why not? Yeah. Um, we got the big. Which one's the big one? Is that? Say what? Which one? Which screen is the big screen right now? Um, that's what's left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I guess for those panel that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's start by talking about Gate. Yeah, good, oh, good right. Call, John. <laughs> um, I have recently seen the first year episodes of Gate, so I can talk about yeah. this a little, little bit. But you all are more the, the, the experts on this one. Right. So. I was there for Rory Murphy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, Rory Murphy is pretty awesome. There. Yeah, I think yeah. He, the, she's definitely one of the, one of the, the pulls. Um, but yeah, so our boy is in the JSDF, uh, Japanese Self-Defense Force, because they don't have an army. Right. They have yeah, not, and they have yeah. not been allowed to have an army. army. It's not an army, no. No, they're allowed to have a standing army now. Oh, they are? Okay, okay. Um, because there's a, there's a World War II prohibition of, for obvious yeah. reasons. <laughs> um, uh... But our guy is an otaku, and he's going down to, I guess, Akihabara or... or uh, Kamiket, I think. Kamiket. Yeah, yeah. Um, when a portal to another world opens up, hey, and uh, immediately there's, like, uh, there's an actual international conflict between, like, what's on the other side, because, like, some armies come through. Uh, but it turns out they're in medieval technology, and... Um, Swords don't win against guns. yeah. Oh, you can you can come in if you want. Mm. Challenger approaches. <laughs> We're talking about gate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you know any of these, feel free to chime in with thoughts. Yeah. Um. But, uh, largely, it's watching the Japanese military be awesome and beat everything forever. Mm -hmm. uh, they are beating up on medieval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. They do wind themselves a little bit with yeah. the. Uh, there's there's a hot spring. Oh yeah. Scene where. The American Special Forces and like two other countries' special forces are all trying to converge on the hot spring because the the, the main character yeah. has a bunch of the uh, otherworldly people there with him, mm. and, and they're trying to do something or another. And then yeah. the JSDS Special Forces by themselves take out the other three countries, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. which it's just mm. I, I, I well, it's just not yeah. gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> America's America's it. holding off. Getting the gate, which is located mm -hmm. in Japan, I'm like no, we would just take it. We would, right. but uh, like I mean, I guess it's basically it's Stargate SG One, uh, ah, but yeah. but Japanese and anime. Mm -hmm. It's not also yeah. just like that they're beating everything. It's like this is the author is treating it as like this is the conceivably correct way to go mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm a big fan of Stargate SG One. Yeah, it is my favorite of the Star series. Uh, gate. Trek, Wars, and Search. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, 
it's a it's huh. it's very funny to just mm. see like the, the just the pro military slant on it. Yeah. yeah, this is the this is we're doing this all the correct way uh, through military domination. Yeah, and the author is um, um, was he ex JSDF? Probably. I think I don't know, I but my. I believe so. That's how all anime yeah. gets made. It's in the <laughs> guy with the hobby yeah. and cute girls in it. Yeah. I mean, now, I don't think any entries that we have here... No, Gate had some... Gate did have some actual cross-promotion with... Yeah, mm. they, they, they were using yeah. it to recruit to the JSDF. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. With the we <laughs> joined the JSDF, we'll give you anime life moves. <laughs> uh, Body pillows? Hey, yeah. Why not? Um, well, and it's interesting because Gate definitely comes from the perspective of military yay. Yeah. Um, it is definitely pro-military in the, the most mm-hmm. sort of complete form, where, um, and as far as pointing out in the chat, they're not saying that, you know, the military is the solution to all problems and nothing ever goes wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, war sucks, but it is definitely like um, a thing. And yeah. just given the first couple episodes, one of the interesting things is the, the take that the... the military takes um, yeah. early on is as kind of a peacekeeping force. Yeah. There's a lot of we're going in and kind of providing supplies yeah. to local villages and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's not just, you know, we're going in there and shooting people. I mean, this is relevant to Japan's place militarily in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, is I don't know if they signed on. I don't know if they got in the... I think they got in the pool for Afghanistan. I don't, I don't know if they got in the pool for Iraq. Um, mm-hmm. Because, like... Ed, America led a charge and everybody right. jumped in mm-hmm. um, for a number of these conflicts. Uh, I think for Afghanistan, Japan provided a few, like, yeah. basically, um, um, I was going to say cleric units. Wow, I've been playing too much D&D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Medic um, units. But, uh, a few medic units, but like, that yeah. was it. Yeah. Um, I know they have some deployments in Sudan with UN mm-hmm. peacekeeping. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, Japan talks about, like, what is the purpose of our military? Should we... Mm-hmm. How interventionist should we be overseas? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do we have a right to? Do we have a right to be there? Uh, or sh- and if we are there, should we be? Should we be promoting our national interests? Right. Like standard mili- standard things that any co- country talks about with its military. Mm-hmm. Uh, Japan just has a specifically unique context, given that it's uh, like in a weird pact with the U.S. for a lot of its defense. Yeah. Um, but also has a big regional threat. <laughs> and also given the fact yeah. that historically the Multiple JSDF... Multiple regional threats. Definitely. Um, the JSDF traditionally has not been involved in a lot of conflicts. Yeah. So they have been involved in a lot of um, domestic peacekeeping. Yeah. Just, again, uh, distributing supplies during major yeah. disasters. So the perspective a lot of yeah. J- Japanese have on J- JSDF is more those sorts of interactions, yes. as and opposed this is, to seeing them fighting in a war. This is very much that because like one of the reasons is the that they're kind of like oh mil- uh, medieval like semi magical things like dragons don't hit ha- a dragon does not hold up to an RPG yeah. <laughs> is a very specific <laughs> thing mm-hmm. like it's real cool. But an RPG will take a dragon out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, is that, like, it's very much kind of an Afghanistan, like, mm. it's like a, a peacekeeping situation. They go in there and they're like, should we take, like, there's a, like, a leader of a, of, like, whoever the Imperium is there. They mm-hmm. had a context where, like, there's an Imperium that ha- is subjugating some of the smaller things around. Mm-hmm. There's conflicts between various peoples. Uh, maybe this one guy's about to do something that we would consider a war crime. Mm-hmm. Should we coup their government? Yeah. Uh, and, like, they eventually, I think, opt for a little more interventionist of maybe mm-hmm. coup the government to stop a war crime, like, to stop a genocide. Mm-hmm. But, like, that's a legit, that's, that's obviously a very legitimate discussion is, like, do you as somebody, as, like, somebody foreign get to jump into mm-hmm. somebody else's conflicts? Well, famously, that never goes wrong. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, like they can learn from that a bit. There's maybe. definitely, I suppose they at least they acknowledge the difficulty there. Mm-hmm. I suppose the thing that mm-hmm. they don't acknowledge with Gate is the history of it, because there's always sure. like people in the military will talk about these con- these issues, like, and they'll often be like, please, they're like, often ask their political counterparts, please find a political solution. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but uh, obviously there's a context of like there's other people who might come at it of like with a little more of a fashy take <laughs> where mm-hmm. it's like no our military because we should take mm-hmm. yeah um like hey there's resources we should take this is certainly a heavy front load I just to say this is a heavy front load I mean it's just yeah. so much to and I'm not trying to cast any aspersions it's just right. like this is the context of like mm-hmm. literally anything any country does yeah there's always like a legitimate, a more legitimately uh, label that you could put on it. Yeah. But how much is that true? And it's one of the reasons why I think Gate is is a an interesting yeah. anime to watch on this because you are seeing things from the perspective of a different culture's military. Um, and obviously, it's not the real military, but yeah. it, you're seeing it through a lens that we typically don't see. There's even cultural exchange. Like I think that's why the yeah. elf is already dressed in jeans and a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Well, we also rip her clothes off. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, I mean, it's also, like, there's, <laughs> there's, it's isekai waifu stuff, yes, too. Yes, Definitely fan service material there. Yeah. Um, obsolete. obsolete. So this obsolete. is, this is a thing I watched. I don't know who produced, I, sh- I should have done a little more research on about who produced and why. Mm. Weirdly, this is actually about America? Oh. Um, or at least the focal unit is American. Hmm. Um, but this one actually goes a lot deeper. Um, mm-hmm. So the the premise of obsolete and it okay. I guess I should uh, obsolete is like a series of web shorts. Oh. They're in three D. It's mechs, but it's like really low quality bad mechs. Mm-hmm. Like it's more like an armored fighting suit. Gotcha. Like uh, exoskeleton kind of. Thing. Yeah, an exoskeleton. Mm-hmm. The premise is that um, it's Earth. Like, right about now. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe it's, like, a few years in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but aliens have showed up. Mm. They, we haven't really actually made contact with the aliens. All they left was a message of, if you put, like, a, like a ton of limestone and a location, mm. we will drop you one of these things. And it's a little exo, it's a little exoskeleton, about a little bigger than a person, kind of like the the Magatech from Final Fantasy VI, because that's how I relate it. <laughs> about that size, mm. or, or uh, maybe a pat, uh, the things from Pat Labor. Oh, okay. We're not talking a giant mech. We're talking uh, like bigger than a, a little bigger than a car, mm-hmm. um, or about that size. Mm. Uh, but the thing is, this is accessible to anyone. They're not sure how the aliens uh, do it, how they get it there. It's just, you put this anywhere. You mine a ton of limestone. Mm, put it we somewhere. They will give you one of these. They will give wow. you one of these. So you're not even sure. Are the aliens running some sort of weird experiment <laughs> here? And, like, the first thing people assume is, like, okay, it's it's definitely, you know, works with the human body. Mm. So, like, okay, we're going to use, like, most people started using it for construction and, mm. like, things Fine. like that very quickly. Yeah. Um, but because it is accessible to literally everybody, mm. uh, they found people found military applications, and it meant that it's kind of like when firearms first got re- like mm. distributed. Um, it's kind of like the AK-47 proliferating mm. the third world. All of a sudden, small guerrilla forces are much more Ooh. able to stand up to conventional military forces. The balance of power has shifted heavily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, conve- like large countries are trying to figure out how to use this well. I mean, wow. obviously still, your conventional stuff is much mm-hmm. bigger than this. Mm-hmm. But if you're not trying to fight a full-scale war, like, small, poorly funded um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, armies in yeah. third world countries mm-hmm. have access to things that can take out helicopters. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. because everybody, like, you can find m- limestone anywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you just kind of, like, see a bunch of engagements of mm-hmm. this American military unit. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also see some, actually, you also see some, uh, like, there's a few episodes that are, like, from the perspective of, like, child soldiers in a third world country. Mm, okay. Um, and like it sets them up that like you know that these people are actually going to come in conflict with each other because mm. they're going to run into engagements with each other. Mm. Um, so it kind of went real deep on geopolitics mm. there. Sanpu and China saying, "Is this from Gen- Urobuchi?" Mm, I don't believe it is. Okay, yeah. but uh, it could be. At the mm. Cole will look that up for me. Sure. I mean, it, I wouldn't be. I mean, I love Gen Urobuchi's works. 
because uh, they make me think about things, mm. and this made me think about things. I'm like, who made yeah, this? It was, or... created, it was by, created by Jen Robuchi. Okay, there we go. that that makes sense then, because mm. like. Honestly, normally when I see the fo a format like this, I'm like, I expect to see a Toyota car in space. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we, yeah. were, we were looking at Web Short, um, mm -hmm. but the action is pretty good. Okay. Um, and like it, it, it just mentions how like different conflicts. They even mm. like they had a reference to like an Indian Sino conflict in the Himalayas. Wow. Which is like yep. a thing that happened back in the '60s, mm -hmm. and like. Oh yeah, there's a couple of units that Everyone are up there. Happen again. Yeah, mm. just fighting a low-scale mm. conflict mm. and freezing to death because it's animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the worst place on yeah. on earth mm. to pick for a for a military yeah. conflict. Every one of the things we're like, can we just fight somewhere else? Yeah, can we just not do it here? Yeah. It, it's 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 one of the many instances in the world where people have fought over completely useless patches of land. <laughs> like, we're going to fight over this patch of desert that has nothing in it. Yep. We're going to fight over this barren, <laughs> cold mountaintop <laughs> that has no population <laughs> because it's ours. Because, yeah, because... Line on map, go here. Yep, exactly. Um, cool, that's very interesting. I, I, I might check that out. Yeah. Full Metal Panic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, have you seen this? I've seen a chunk. I'm actually only halfway through it. I, I, I've seen uh, the original one, Fumofu. Um, most yeah. of the original one, Fumofu, um, all of Second Raid, and then the first episode of um, Infinite Victory. I actually got into Invisible. this. I'm halfway into it because mm -hmm. um, one of my good friends, who's an American comic book guy, does not like anime. Mm -hmm. Um does general and he's tried it he's given it a fair shake but he just doesn't like like he's like i'm very culturally american mm -hmm. and like i get that they're doing some of these things but i don't it's not for me mm -hmm. he likes military sf comedy mm -hmm. and that's exactly what full metal panic is there is i have like nine volumes of this and oh yeah there. yeah there's much down there um but i've only uh, seen the hot spring episode okay <laughs> the hot spring episode is one of the greatest yeah um, yes, yeah, so Full Metal Panic is really interesting because um, main character is basically hero Yui from Gundam Wing. Um, yep. um, child soldier, um, yep. very traumatized by that, um, uh, in a sort of paramilitary organization. Mm -hmm. um, main premise is that um, through some weird complex plot things, mm -hmm. possibly aliens, um, humanity ha is being given accelerated access to technology. Mm -hmm. So they are able to build things like mechs um, in like '90s Japan, mm -hmm. uh, where they, you would not be able to do that. And so um, military um, uh, technology is advancing mm -hmm. very rapidly. Um, so the main character is in this sort of this organization, this kind of a peacekeeping organization. Yeah, um, and, and it, it's specifically Japan that has access mm -hmm. to this, not other countries, mm -hmm. right? So um, other countries are getting access to it, mm -hmm, but they're one, behind. And one of the one of the implications of, that they get to in the later s seasons is that the organization that they're part of is actively suppressing that in other countries. Yeah, they are trying to keep this to be a Japanese thing. Yeah, and kind of essentially kidnapping all the other ones from other countries. Yeah, like, no, you don't get this. Yeah. Um. um and so, so it, it again forefronts Japan militarily in yeah. the world. Mm -hmm. Um. And it should also be pointed yeah. out because of the screenshot. Um, also, spats of comedy. Um, he gets, oh yeah, yeah. He he gets assigned. They're, a, they're in a school. Yes. Um, so it's kind of weird because he's a super serious like military child soldier mm -hmm. who doesn't understand school hijinks, but is always involved <laughs> in school hijinks. Mm -hmm. Well, there's also the dichotomy that like seasons one and two are extremely pretty much serious. And yeah. Season three is just. Uh, like Kyoto animation yeah. slapstick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's serious there's serious spy work like going yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, and then it it comes back to being yeah. very serious. Yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah, it weirdly is, I mean it makes commentary on mm -hmm. like it's not okay that this child soldier has yeah. been a child soldier. Oh, well, um, especially the second raid goes very heavy in like yeah. no he's a broken human being yeah and like this is not good and it also gets to the fact that like. Um, not only is that not good, like, there are implications that in the future, 
he's going to break. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be able to function as a human being yep. if this doesn't work out well. He's barely functioning now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so this idea... And then, then the problem is you can't just fix that overnight. Yeah. Like, the, the process of him resolving those issues degrades his performance, you know, as a pilot and human being and so forth because now suddenly he's processing all this trauma. Um, and so, you know, what do you do with that? Mm -hmm. uh, which is which is quite interesting. Um, and goofy comedy. Yeah. <laughs> so just be aware of that. Yeah. So it's still... I mean, it's very much... I mean, in the same mold, it's all, all of these shows up front have a, a slightly jingoistic... Uh, perspective, and I wouldn't qualify it as different than the jingoistic perspective of any American show focused sure. on the military. Yeah. Um, uh, like it's cut and paste the same kind of like, no, we should be a, like we should be in charge of things just a little bit because we're a little more responsible than all these other mm -hmm. people, right? Because everybody's a little value centric. Mm -hmm. Like, no, we we're preventing crimes or, or mm -hmm. genocides or some things that are bad. Mm -hmm. But like, there are also things that we think are bad. Right. Um, uh, and everybody thinks that they should be in charge of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's a little bit of an argument for that. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, one of the things we're doing with this panel is talking about things that are relevant to today's uh, contemporaneous discussions in Japanese politics to the best degree that we can understand <laughs> Japanese politics yeah. and culture. Not J Japanese. Can't speak to it. Thank yeah. yeah. Much. Uh, but, like, these are from those things. things so, like, the perspectives that these authors are, yeah. are bringing. Mm -hmm. um, it should also be pointed out for Full Metal Panic, because I did watch some of the yeah. uh, behind-the-scenes stuff on this. Um, they do... Um, one of the things I, and I like that I like about this is that, um, like, they went back and, like, um, watched, like, Japanese tank demonstrations. Um, mm. as reference for, like, how these machines move. It's actually a funny moment on that, where, yeah. where they're watching that and they're going, Mecca, ridiculous. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like a tank would just blow out a, 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 you know, a leg and your Mecca is done. Like, it just it doesn't, it's yeah. silly, but they look so cool. Yeah. Um, and so, like, they do the research on trying to make the Mecca feel like an integrated part of the world. Yeah. Um, that is not just completely ridiculous. But there's also that, like, they're not... Like military otaku coming out of right. the, 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 you know, um, the we mechs are not the time. solution to everything. It's right. not everything is done with mechs. Mm -hmm. uh, all conventional military stuff is used, but it's True. specifically they use mechs for like specific behind lines, yeah. like uh, things that require a little more subtlety. Yeah. Like they they often use them as stealth units. Yeah, it's it's kind of like um, they, they they do in Gasaraki, which I would love to get to. Yeah. But we have so many things to cover. Yeah. Um, the, the same thing about the obsolete is right. obsolete is not like everything is mechs now. Right, exactly. Um, but I know in, in, in Gatsuraki the idea yeah. is mecha are a flexible unit. Hey, that's why I like original Gundam. Or even yeah. original Gundam is not everything are mechs. <laughs> oh, no, no. Definitely. Like original Gundam tried to justify why there are mechs at all, and a lot of it is because we're in space. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And balls and all that. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about neat. Yeah. Uh, neat are neat. Yeah, so NEAT is an English acronym for yeah. not in education, employment, or training. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are sitting around in your parents' house not doing a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you're probably very depressed. Uh, you're, not, you're, you're not a productive member of society. And this gave rise to the, um, from the fact that, um, and I forget exactly when it started, but there was a significant percentage of folks who were mm -hmm. in this and not actively pursuing education or employment yeah. or whatever. So there was like, I'm just going to sit here and basically collect unemployment forever. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, which was a very different perspective than a lot of Japanese had had yeah. up to that point sort of historically. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a new trend. Many, many cultures derive a lot of their meaning from a person's job, what do you do is the mm -hmm. first question. Um, and like there's a concept that, you know, we're all working together to make our society. Mm -hmm. What is this person doing? Are they just, uh, just a parasite? Yeah. Um, uh, and but it's kind of a thing that everybody got into in the '90s because of the Japanese economic yeah. crash, mm -hmm. uh, where like if you're if you're experiencing a major economic crash, it's not really a whole lot of choice mm -hmm. in the matter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, welcome to the NHK. Uh, very depressing. It's okay. a grim 
grim mm. look. It's not just, here's a guy who's playing video games, so let's look at his nerd hobby lifestyle. Uh, he spends a lot of the time lying on his floor. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, there, there's a lot of trigger warnings that come with the show, too. Yes. Oh, okay. Like, this is a, yeah, there's a lot of trigger warnings. There's, uh, there's suicide attempts, mm. um, uh, by maybe multiple characters. Okay. Mm. Um, there's a lot of heavy discussion of that. Mm. Um, Drug use. I yeah. As well. Yeah. Oh, wow. uh, like the the suicide stuff comes later, but there's a mm. lot of like. So this one girl basically meets this guy. Uh, she's a teenage girl, and she's like, "I want to make this like." She's deriving her purpose by making this guy into a functioning member of society and re- mm-hmm. retraining yeah. him mm-hmm. into society mm-hmm. uh, because he's been a, a full hikikomori. Uh, he's not been going outside at all. Uh, he's become fully paranoid, and I think only watching it, watching the Japanese public broadcast, uh, mm-hmm. I don't know, Nippon something, but it's the, <laughs> it's their BBC, the yeah. NHK. Mm-hmm. Um and I think he has a whole conspiracy theory around the NHK yeah, yeah. controls everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 yeah he, he started to, to um, see messages in NHK broadcasts. Oh, yeah, th- yeah. This is the guy who gets wrapped up into conspiracy... I mean, very relevant now. When, mm. uh, this is the guy who would get wrapped up into conspiracy theory and <laughs> go mm. do some crimes at a Capitol. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because, uh, uh, like, he's disconnected from Eddie everything. Yeah. Um, and it's, I think one of the interesting things about the show, and I've only seen like yeah. episode one or two, um, but the way they present him is he is just at that sort of trigger point yeah. where, like, he's he's starting to crack, so yeah. to speak. And so it's like, can he be pulled back from the edge? Yeah. Or is he going to kind of continue down that path? Like, seriously, this girl is largely just doing very basic therapy with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, it... it takes it not as just like I'm trying to give you a like some job training mm. or a little pep talk like they're talking about mental health the entire mm. time and even the ending which is successful mm. is almost a little grim because he's like mm. okay I'm a construction worker mm. it rains my job sucks but he still has the will to just kind of like I'm going to be able to keep doing this mm. mm-hmm. I think okay yeah Good. wow there's, wow. there's also, like, the fact that he, in, the, in the beginning, he's clearly, like, rejecting any help to... Yes. Uh, okay. ...attempts to help him. Okay. Which is also something emblematic of yeah. mm-hmm. mental health. Yeah. But, but one of the things that the, the show is taking here is it's taking, it's very take, it's taking a mental health perspective, mm-hmm. which I haven't seen any other show take. Uh, uh, before, before or since, I have not seen any show engage this way. Um, even though this is very much uh, a surreal comedy in a lot of ways, because sure. you see a lot of its hallucinations. Um, <laughs> most right. other neats I see mm. uh, have gone like full anime waifu, where they're more mm. just this is a cute thing, like you might get yeah. like a two sided coin, like an Umaro chan or something. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, or like, here's a cute girl, and she doesn't know how to function in society. Isn't that cute? Yeah. Whereas, like, this man is yeah. disgusting to everybody. Like, look mm-hmm. at him. <laughs> yeah, he's just, I mean, he's, like, objectively yeah. in the beginning just a bad person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, the only thing I can think of that would be even close would be Kami-san Can't Communicate. Yeah. Yeah. Because and even that's, even that's just light. kind of, like, yeah. that's I feel very, like that almost yeah. comes from the, yeah. uh... The Asperger boyfriend thing. <laughs> she, she, she's very functional in society. She yeah. just has this one issue she's trying to deal yeah. with. Or even, even what is it? Um, um, what are the girls from Azumanga Daio who everybody thinks is cool but is actually oh, yes. shy? Um, Satsuki. Satsuki. Yeah. Satsuki, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, Kobe Sane has the same thing going yeah. on. But, yeah. like, everybody in society, if they could see this man, could see he's mm-hmm. unshaved, unkempt, mm-hmm. smelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's constantly on the verge of starving to death because he does not have the mm-hmm. will to literally feed himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a lot there's a lot that goes mm-hmm. into this. Um, does Anohana deal with the main character's sort of issues? I haven't seen Anohana. I have, I you either. are yeah, deep into it. Anohana's a lot of things. Okay, yeah. Uh, Anohana, yeah, I guess uh, Jun is like, I'm pretty sure that was his main mm-hmm. name. Mm-hmm. 
I think it was still like kind of a, a soft and padded version of mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like NHK is a very raw look at how yeah. this would actually turn mm-hmm. out. Um, whereas most other other shows involving characters like this are like, yeah, they the premise is that they're inside and not yeah. going out and they've lost contact with friends and they're uh, not going to school, but it's also like they still seem mentally well adjusted mm-hmm. and uh, like when the when push comes to shove during like the first two episodes yeah. they're like, Okay, I I know how to talk to people and integrate with people and yeah. reconnect with old friends. Whereas somebody with mental health like the, the mm-hmm. main character in this show, it's like None of those avenues are open to him at yeah. the yeah. moment. And mm. Even if like, even if he had people that would accept him, it's not just like going on Facebook or whatever. <laughs> yeah. and being like, hey, what's up? It's yeah. like there is a lot of mental blocks yeah. to someone with mental health issues, mm-hmm. uh, I- including things like oh, social I, media can't help. Well, it's, <laughs> it's it's just like things that anybody struggles with. It's yeah. like, uh, even. They, they they demonstrate it in the show. It's like this girl seems to earnestly want to help him. Yeah. But like I I can connect with the fact that like he just does not believe that that's yeah. the case. Yeah. Yes. He's like there's no way you actually want to help. Yes. Him. There's yeah. no way you actually want to connect or talk. And that's mm-hmm. kind of true because he's making the same argument to her. Yeah. Um And it it actually makes like it's one of the reasons that this is a good entry here is it's not just tut tut, be mm-hmm. a functioning member of Japanese society and be. Like, you know, yeah. a harmonious member contributing to the common good, which is mm-hmm. kind of the more general line, I understand. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, most societies have this. Sure. Uh, I, I don't know who the quote is from, but, like, there's a quote that um, Japanese culture is just like everyone else, just more so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it's all the things that you'd expect in any other culture. They just have more of it. Mm-hmm. It's more intense. Yeah. Um, but, like... They get clear that like both these characters are actually pretty mentally distraught, and while she's trying to make him into mm. like a standard member of society, mm-hmm. that is in itself also pretty psychologically uh, bad Thought for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they arrive at a pretty grim but functional conclusion mm-hmm. uh, where they are where they are at least. For the moment, okay. But you have no guarantees about the future. <laughs> but, like, it's not like you'll become a member of society and, like, you know, just being integrated into society and the power of friendship and connection mm-hmm. will make it okay. Good now. Will make it yeah. okay. So mm-hmm. it's... Interesting. It's a lot deeper than yeah. Yeah. than anything else. Another show, a uh, U.S. show, yeah. that has a similar, like, premise with the shitty main characters, BoJack Horseman. Oh, Okay. Uh, and yeah, at yeah. the end of the show, it's a very simple. Yeah, thing. I guess it's, like, it's, not, very it's not a happy ending at the end. Yeah. It's just this is functional. He's, yeah, he's not. He's not going like they've reached a point where they're they're not going to like yeah. end mm-hmm. yourself. That's a good comparison. The other thing I would say is this is not an argument for this is how we solve the societal problem. Like mm-hmm. we have this problem mm-hmm. in society, mm-hmm. we should do this thing to help society. Mm-hmm. It's making the argument that no, I don't care about society. Mm-hmm. You are dying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here's how you help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the alcoholic yeah. anonymous thing. Like, yeah. You don't solve that with big programs. You you solve it by individual people. Yeah. You know, working through the process. Yeah. And they're kind of going through a individual mentoring. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's pretty, pretty cool. much what I'm getting at with that. Really cool. Yeah. I, it's funny. I can't think of any other anime. Yeah. That tackles this at this level. Yeah. At it's all. arguing from yeah. the perspective of. Yeah. Of, of the, uh, the yeah. yeah, that's cool. Um, Eden of the East. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't know remember, a lot of this I beyond the first episode. Okay. Yeah, I, I watched it and it just emptied my, <laughs> my memory. That was some of these shows we come up with collectively as a group with two members that aren't. Uh, present yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now, so so we might skip some of them. Yeah. The I'll take this one. Um, Eden of the East is interesting because it is. Um, um, the main character um, wakes up with full amnesia mm-hmm. um, and is in a very specific situation in, in life. And I don't want to um, explain much about what's going on because it's it's a, one of the fun things about Eden of the East is being thrown in a situation and, and figuring things out as, a, as the story goes. Um, and that is very much the, the intent. Um, what did you, and I should say I've only seen, I believe, the first season. I know there are like several movies and other stuff which mm-hmm. I'm going to um, explore the story further. What's interesting about that season is that it explores the fact that the main character um, has a lot of, essentially, power, a lot of abilities, a lot of things he can do, and he 
voluntarily self-isolates because he knows the extent of that power and partly to use that power but also because he's like I need to figure out what to do with this and he does that and, and then he, he basically carries out experiments and we find out he has carried out experiments in the past which is one of the reasons why he has amnesia now um, but the idea that isolation can be um, an, an effective response to things so that you can figure things out. Mm -hmm. That sometimes um, trying to deal with something through a social lens, through society's lens, and through your friend's lens is not the most helpful thing. You kind of need to figure that out on your own somewhere mm -hmm. else. And then once you figure that out, reintegrate. And kind of you know make that make that work. Okay. Um, so that was kind of that, that was kind of neat. Um, and it's also kind of big explosions and you know action <laughs> and stuff going on. And in romance, you can do big characters. Um, but just you know, that perspective from a show is I think a little unusual. Mm -hmm. so that was kind of cool. We we again front loaded this. One yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then we'll oh, yeah, yeah. Aww. So yeah, I I actually really liked uh, this one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this one is actually kind of interesting. She's an Alito Nito mm. uh, because she's not a young person. She's mm. middle aged, mm -hmm. um, and she's, she's been working. Been she's had a successful career. Yeah, like she's in her thir like thirties or so. Mm. Uh, actually, I don't know. It's yeah. anime always throws me off because they're like, oh, this person's middle aged, and they draw them as middle aged, yeah. but they're like twenty five. Yeah, or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in any case, yeah. that's the phase of life she's in. Mm -hmm. um, She's actually just taking a break from her career, in which she has been very successful, mm -hmm. um, gained a lot of promotions, and gained a lot of money. She's not a person struggling to survive. Yeah. She's literally just taking a break. Very intentionally. Yeah. Uh, because she has a, she has a lot of money, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she's single, so she's like, I could just spend some time with MMOs <laughs> all day long. <laughs> um. And it's recovery. Yeah. It's recovery yeah. because it is very much yes. her recovering from her job. Yes, really. It, she know. was had a lot of work stress. Yeah, and she's a very she was a very functional person, but yeah. she feels like she completely burned herself out. Yeah. Like on every level, so she just she needs time to kind of come back to herself and find yeah. herself again. Um, and there's also a lot of interesting. Um, there's some other things in here that I uh, I really like, which is mm -hmm. that um. Uh, they they spend a lot of time on alternate identities and mm -hmm. kind of gender stuff because yeah. uh, the romance between the two main characters in the middle happens in an MMO game where they're both cross-playing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a factor of how they generate a romance in the game. Mm -hmm. And then they're not they're not so forgotten. They're like playing this up and they're like, they consider like, okay, how do we actually cross this threshold mm -hmm. of like... Because she's like, we've been doing this in a game, is it okay for me to yeah. ask, or is this crazy? <laughs> um, and, you know, they eventually meet up and, um, like, kind of help each other through a little bit of their lives and um, have a nice romance. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, she's yeah. very much recovering from career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I also really like this show because of how healthy their relationship is. Mm -hmm. Um both in the game and outside of the game. Yeah. Like, the, the way they mm -hmm. um, develop that romantic relationship They're is, adults. They're, they're, they're ab absolutely, they're adults, and they like they, they want to respect each other's boundaries, but mm -hmm. also kind of, you know, see where that's going to go. And so it, it's, it models that very well. Mm -hmm. um, also interesting because the, the guy in real life is a very successful person. Yeah. And he's kind of reaching that point of, like, okay, how much do I want to devote to my, to my job? Like, mm -hmm. I've... I've done the thing to make myself successful, which involves a lot of work. Yeah. Is it time to, like, pull back on that or whatever? So yeah. So exploring that, too. I mean, in this case, it's almost um, elevating the need. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in a culture, again, every culture, but more so, where uh, identity is formed through work and through dedication to work, mm -hmm. they're, they're like, no, it's... If you can support yourself, you could take the time to mm -hmm. take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And to have a romance and do these other things. You don't need to sacrifice everything for your yeah. job. You need to make those decisions intentionally. One of my favorite moments in Recovery mm -hmm. and Joking, and this is not a spoiler, it comes yeah. in episode one, is when you, because you initially see her um, quitting her job 
mm-hmm. and they, they give her like a, a, a some flowers, mm-hmm. you know, and typical kind of you know congratulations. It's been great working. Everyone's like very much. It's been like legitimately. It's been great working for you. I'm sorry you're leaving, but you know you know we respect that. And she comes home and she like immediately dumps the flowers in the trash. <laughs> And it's like, haven't we all been there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, you know, I appreciate the gesture, but no, yeah, I'm yeah. over this. I'm yeah, so yeah. over this. Um, but yeah. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I, I have and a whole panel guess, about guess some what's stuff. First I was just going to say, I believe I know what the first one is. No, it's yeah. not. Cool. Okay. No, no. I this, knew this was first. Okay. So, okay, I don't have a whole panel on it, but I go into okay. this very deeply. Yeah. yeah. Uh, interviews with Monster Girls. Oh, boy. Um... So this is in my unexpectedly smart shows panels you too. Know what? You could probably just actually. Make a no, I could. <laughs> I'm actually trying to get um, one of one of my friends yeah. to because mm-hmm. he wrote some graduate papers. He's a uh, mm. he's got his graduate degree in philosophy now, mm. um, but he did uh, he he took some uh, a disability course, mm. a philosophy of disability course, and. This is very specific. Like you, you could take some broader interpretations of some of the things, but this is very specifically about the disabled experience. Yeah. Um, In multiple aspects. Yeah. Too, which is cool. Uh, it's it's through like high school waifu cute girls, mm-hmm. like uh, cute anime girls. Um, uh, and the context is slight is different enough that like it allows you to think differently about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um. So the the premise for the show is you've got uh, our big buff boy uh, teacher, <laughs> um, who is just uh, goes to a school that happens to have a number of demi humans there. And demi humans are a new thing in the world. They're a very low percentage of the population, but there are people who have basically manifested as um, like supernatural creatures. But it turns out that like none of them have like powers per se. <laughs> like none of like, they don't get to fly or shoot mm. lasers or anything. And they're usually more problematic for them than anything mm-hmm. else. So, like, the blonde girl in the middle is a vampire. But, like, she's very much a girl with anemia. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, like, she fatigues easily. She needs mm-hmm. to be excused from gym class. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the the Dullahan is one of the weirdest ones. She's got a, a portal in her deck. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it means that she basically is usually down an arm because she's often having to hold her head. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's some mobility issues. Mm-hmm. Um, the girl with the teal hair is a Yukiona, and she doesn't really understand her own condition, so she's afraid that she could harm others. Mm-hmm. And the teacher on the right is, um, or on the left is, um, in the in the gym clothes, <laughs> is a succubus. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't actually sexualize her a whole lot. No, no, no. Um, like, this show is actually pretty chaste and, and cute. Very. Um, uh, but, like, it confronts... The model that I eventually settled on for understanding this show, because there was a few different models, like, uh, it could be just generally minority experience, and there's a... You could look at it as the specific experience of people with different types of disability. Um, but a model... Uh, I may have to reference it later, but uh, put out by in a blog by um, uh, actually took the take that each of the girls is representative of a different aspect of support. Oh, interesting! In a person's life, so the the first arc with the vampire, mm-hmm. that's her sister above her, and her sister will let her chew on her arm because she has an oral fixation. Mm-hmm. They'll have keep her blood packs in the fridge, um, and the school will excuse her from gym class mm-hmm. because she needs. Like, if she has support from her family and her school, she can live a full and good life. Mm -hmm. Um, And the whole reason and the premise is that this guy is talking to these girls, getting first-hand accounts through interviews Mm -hmm. of their lived experience. Yeah. uh, So that he can, like, learn about it for research, but it also helps them understand themselves Mm -hmm. and, like, help society understand them. And the the context is... As a teacher, he's yeah. kind of also doing this to say, I can help you kind of process yeah. this. I, I'm a safe person with which to yeah. share things, so forth and so on. So mm-hmm. it's not just, I'm curious. Yeah. yeah. So the Yukiona, uh, she's a- afraid of her condition mm-hmm. um, because there are a lot of the lore around Yukiona is that you can free somebody to death. But 
Well, and specifically, yeah. like, you know, the Yuki Oda in yeah. Japanese culture yeah. is the evil woman who lures yes. someone to her death in her yeah. icy domain, so... Frequently very sexy evil woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true, true, yes. Yeah. Um, but, like, she's afraid that that could happen, mm -hmm. and so he's like, okay, let's walk through what you can. All she can really do is make ice chips appear in a bath. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, this is... Well, like, it seems that this happens dependent on your emotional state. Mm -hmm. This is the extent of what can happen. Yeah. But also, here's how you understand your condition, and it seems that you are not a danger to anybody. Um, because, her, like, so she needed some help with that. Yeah. Um, while in contrast, the succubus. Well, yeah, while well, so in the contrast, the succubus... The succubus is heavily. Um, actually, I'll get to the succubus just a, okay, yeah, just yeah, yeah, a second yeah, later. Sure. Hers is a lot harder. I don't, mm -hmm. So, the the Dullahan, uh, her major conflict is being able. Like the her arc focuses on being able to integrate into the class around her. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's bullying her. In fact, she has the the opposite problem. Yeah, which is that people treat her so normally that they don't like to acknowledge. Uh, mm -hmm. The challenges. Yeah, she has, her, the yeah. challenges she faces, and she'll crack jokes to try and like you know make let people know that like it's okay to recognize this, mm -hmm. but they get nervous about it, and like she's like, no, I like I'm not only my disability, yeah. but my disability is part of what makes me me. Yeah, and they, they yeah. The they bring up it's like a mechanical mm -hmm. thing too because they build yeah. that special harness for her head. So yeah, has, it's just it's like the teacher is just. Someone in a position of power bringing yeah. attention to disabilities of mm -hmm. people who yeah. do not have that same amount of power, and yeah. like, yeah. Uh, we're aware of the problems, but not in a position to do anything to fix yeah. those problems themselves because of the lack of power. And it's one of the things I love about the show is that it it, it directly addresses the fact yeah. that if you pretend these things don't exist. You're kind of erasing a part of these people's actual experiences. Yes, there's a respectful way to do that, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, one of the things that, that, that we see later yeah. on is this idea that, you know, part of having a conversation with somebody is, oh, what's that like? Yeah. That, that is, that is, that, that is a... People, people have thing. different experiences mm -hmm. because of gender, race, yep. uh, ability. There's all sorts of things that make the way you go through, uh, you uh, chart a course through society mm -hmm. different. Yeah. And you kind of, like, you don't want to, like, fully treat somebody based on their label sure. but like it's a going to be a part of their experience and you want to you want to acknowledge that to some degree. Mm -hmm. So then the because this is a going to be a little truncated we have a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, the succubus actually she has a government handler. Um, mm -hmm. so I was really confused about this one for a lot because mm -hmm. like there's like she has a power like she's the one with an actual power mm -hmm. in that like her pheromones do affect men. Um, so she has a hard left. She has to take the first train in the morning and the last train in the evenings to avoid being on a train with other people. She has to live in the boonies so she's not near anybody. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, is this just like a representation of women in Japan and some mm -hmm. other things? But the this article, um, I'm forgetting the author's mm -hmm. name, uh, but she, she postulated that, like, no, this is about... And as, as soon as the, the idea was mm -hmm. posited, I'm like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It's about how the government... And society often interacts with the sexuality of disabled people, uh, um, mm -hmm. as that it is something dangerous or taboo. Mm -hmm. Like either it is explicitly legislated um, that people may not be able to procreate, or there might be mm -hmm. forced sterilization programs, and yeah. like these things were happening in um, both America and Japan in like decades like sixties to nineties. Like mm -hmm. there's like, these things are much more recent yeah. than people think. Um, I, I think... Yeah. I think... Was Japan who... Uh, um, some country this week like, yeah. um, publicly apologized for doing this yeah. uh, recently. Yeah. And, uh, like, I'm not... Like, yeah. And, like, we think that, like, we're ahead in America and we were, we're not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know about for specifically disabled, but I know, like, mm. the most recent sterilizations of Native Americans mm. were happening in the 90s. Yeah, Canada and the US. Yeah. And what's interesting, too, about the succubus is the fact that from her, her, mm. her experience yeah. is she is so overly conscious of it yes. that she then won't allow herself to have any sort yes. of 
um, even romantic yes. you know, relationship. She's together. unsure anybody will be able to see mm-hmm. past her yeah. uh, her pheromones. And mm-hmm. this guy is just like, he's a normal guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. he's, he's experiencing this, but she thinks she... she she thinks uh, Road is silly for some part that he's not affected by the pheromones just because he has some self will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to not be a creep. And it does, yeah. the, it does the anime thing where she falls in love with him yeah. immediately because he's the first person mm-hmm. to show her normal attention. Yeah. True. Uh, but, like, yeah, there's actually a long and grim history with that and that, mm-hmm. like, is pointed towards by her having a government handler. Yeah, interesting. Uh, that's all I need to yeah. say about it. It's just Monster Girls. It's a fun, cute. Like as much as I've said here, it's mostly a fun, cute watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it's 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 adorable. Yeah, it's um, super. It's stealth in the way it makes you think about yeah, these things. Absolutely. Um, cool. Okay. Rojan Z. So yes, it, it's in, um, John in chat mentions Rojan Z yeah. as well. Um, um, uh, Katsuhiro Otomo, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, uh, movie. Uh, the basic premise is yeah. um, a like fully automated hospital bed for mm-hmm. the aged mm-hmm. is invented and um, is under testing, and then things go wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and the bed kind of um, well, I might as well explain. This is, this is back of the DVD sort of explanations. Um, the bed kind of goes rogue mm-hmm. and kind of um, escapes through the streets and causes chaos because the patient in the bed. Um, wants something, mm-hmm. and the bed kind of realizes this, and to kind of c- fulfill its programming, tries to get him kind of across town mm-hmm. to do that. Um, so it's very, it, it, very absurd mm-hmm. story, very absurd kind of presentation. But the underlying point is very much about how do we care for um, uh, elderly, elderly yeah. people? Yeah. yeah, and I imagine for Japan, like. Um, like it, as very as uh, uh, more uh, having multi generational houses, mm-hmm. uh, and like every society has, um, it's probably just an interaction with they went hard into capitalism a little later mm-hmm. than America did. I actually saw some stats on this on the mm-hmm. average household size. Oh. Um, it was related to how to prepare meals mm-hmm. that like recipes that. Okay. Are from the 1940s or something. Oh, were made yeah. for six-person households. Yeah. <laughs> um. So they don't cook up the same. Yep. Uh. Because that was the average household size. Mm-hmm. Uh. Because you would have probably more kids, but yeah. also uh, there's a likelihood that there's a grandparent. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. parents are living in the uh, elderly parents are living in the household, but as like America hits late capitalism. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Earlier than uh, most other countries, mm-hmm. um, American families tend to move across the country, become more isolated mm-hmm. from each other, become more individualistic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like we start having to invent things like social security and other mm-hmm. stuff because it's no longer assumed that you, every generation just has kids that will take care of them in their old age. And industrialization yeah. plays a factor because when you're 20, you now move away from the farm yeah. into the city and you have your yeah. own place there. You're not living only generationally, which I found recently mm-hmm. was particularly acute in Japan because that basically mm-hmm. all happened in the 1960s. Ah, yeah. You know, there was this very strong time when oh, all that, of that happened very okay, that, that that looks about the same as uh, when it happened in America then. True, um, but um, um, in Japan it was all in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, 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 everybody <laughs> in, goes in to Osaka Tokyo. and so forth. Yeah, yeah. The um, mega city. Yeah, the mega cities. Uh, and so it was, uh, it was, it was a thing. Yeah. So like, uh, I mean, often in anime, when you see uh, in a rural town, it is mm-hmm. only populated by elderly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, the same is true. That's why we have a rust belt <laughs> and other yep. things. It's mm-hmm. like uh, our elderly are in the places where they grew up, mm-hmm. but all the kids are gone. Yeah. Uh, so you're like you're like, well, if nobody, if the kids aren't going to take care of them. Mm-hmm. Will. Who will? Do we get a million people, like a billion mm. people, to be nurses? Do we do mm. it? Let's see if we can all automate this. Let's yeah. make a robot. <laughs> We're in Japan. Nothing can go wrong with this. Exactly. Yes. Um, it's also complicated by the fact that the the patient himself mm-hmm. is um, has 
in issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so it delves into those questions of what is care? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you don't, you know, um, if mm -hmm. somebody's dealing with dementia, for example, you don't give them everything they ask for. Yeah. <laughs> because they don't necessarily know what's best for them. Yeah. And so it's that whole question, too, of mm -hmm. proper care can be a very complicated question. Yeah. Um, uh, with a lot of explosions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, it it's, is a very kind of goofy through an adaptation. absurdist frame. Yes. <laughs> absurdist is a great... great yeah. Um, we're at time, but we're going to go a little bit longer, because yeah. again, we have, some, we have some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simon Voice. Oh, so yes, again, okay. As, as I didn't. I haven't seen this. Okay. Yet. Okay. Have you seen I, it? I've, I've seen it. Pains me. Okay. It's been it burns. A while. I, I've I've seen it, and the mug is down there somewhere. Yeah, there, nice. right over nice. there. So uh, there's. Uh, I think I think the, the the strange thing about a silent voice is mm -hmm. that it has it's not uh, set in stone like everybody thinks. It's a, a great representation of mm -hmm. uh, the death experience yeah. and how and how uh, the main character approaches it, especially because. As well, it's not just about the girl; it's mm. about the main character. Yeah, uh, yeah. A silent voice is really about bullying. Yeah. yeah, more than it is about the death experience. So yeah. there's there's like, I I've seen I can't recall it off the top of my head, but I've definitely seen that people are not always a hundred percent satisfied with how this uh, material approaches mm. bullying. Mm -hmm. and the, yeah, all, and yeah. the the, the quote-unquote solution yeah. uh, that is presented with it, mm. but. Yeah. Uh, I well, will we'll say talk talk a little bit about that because what mm -hmm. I've heard, I, the only yeah, I don't have the knowledge oh, okay. off my head. <laughs> so the only thing I've heard is that like one of the unique things that this brings mm -hmm. is that yeah, it's not even really about the person with the disability. It's more mm -hmm. about how some the other person goes from like a, a bully and a, like a lazily like this is like what was expected of me. It's like oh, you're mm -hmm. supposed to bully this person, so I'm bullying this person, and then slowly trans how the journey they take towards being recognizing this as a person with a different experience yeah. and uh becoming more inclusive and like i mean we're living through uh the times they are a changing and like the internet has recorded mm -hmm. <laughs> everything that we've thought yeah. so you could if you are uh stern of soul you could probably mm -hmm. go back and see how your thoughts have changed on a lot of topics, mm -hmm. and I suppose this is kind of like reconciling with that transition. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's always going to be like this is always going to be very contentious because this is a topic of our, our word of the day that we're debating in our sphere. Mm. Is one just how does a person change? It used yeah. to be that like oh you just wait for a generation to die off <laughs> because like transition is slow. Mm -hmm. So well, and that's yeah. one of the interesting things about this mm -hmm. is that. No, without getting into spoilers, yeah. he's not even, he doesn't even believe he can make it right. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't even really believe he can change per se. He mm -hmm. believes he has done something that is indefensible. Mm -hmm. And so he is doing something to apologize. But spoiler alert, okay. like the story begins with him intending to commit suicide mm -hmm. and then being pulled back from that by Shoko, basically. Um, so it, you know. He's not. He he he's not trying to make a better. Um, uh, uh, so, basic idea is that um, he did a thing in the bullying, which was very expensive, which cost a lot of money. What he is doing is he he um, gets a job so he can pay back his mother for mm -hmm. the money he checked his back, and that was it. And that was that that was, you know. And then he goes to try to meet Shoko just to essentially say goodbye. Okay. Um, but it is the fact that he then makes connections. And is able to. This is actually connect interestingly yeah. back to the the mental health thing, um, because this is very much him being just closed off to the world, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that like because of the result of the bullying, he was very much excluded himself. Okay. So he's shut off from the world. In fact, one of the, one of the, the things they do in the, yeah. the anime is he sees everyone with X's over their heads, yeah, over their faces, um, and it's those kind of falling away that is is, is the evolution. Okay. But, so there's maybe a kind of a concept of restorative justice here. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. how do you, yeah. how do you attempt to, like, you can't undo the crime, mm -hmm. but how do you attempt mm -hmm. to make both people, mm -hmm. the the victim and the perpetrator, mm -hmm. more whole in the process? Yeah. It also does touch on the, um, the experience of Shoko mm -hmm. and the fact that like no one. Not only does no one understand her, no one takes the time to understand mm -hmm. her. Um, and I also like the fact that it, it, it 
the manga at least talks. Actually, that's a good interesting point. Yeah. The anime completely uh, ignores this because there's only so much time. The manga goes into the experience of her mother, mm. of being the the caretaker of somebody that has this issue that nobody is willing to accommodate, no one cares about, see, significantly impacts this. And you see in the movie, she's kind of a lot to take in. <laughs> like she, she's kind of uh, angry with everyone because she spent the past 15 years of her life advocating for her daughter in a context mm-hmm. where no one cares. And so that's an interesting perspective too, of mm-hmm. just this. And I don't want to speak for the Japanese experience, but from what I've heard, there has been, um, it's been a longer road for Japanese um, social structures to accommodate these sorts of things. Mm. If you, you know, if, if you can't keep up too bad, kind of, has been a, mm. a lot of perspective. So in a lot of situations, it's just like, well, we, we, we don't have any accommodations for you. Yeah. Um, which you don't even think about it. Yeah. Um, and you see that in the movie where, with the, uh, the, the homo teacher who just doesn't, whatever. I mean, one of the, that's one of the kind of core concepts of philosophy of disability is... Um, disability is a class mm. that is relative. Yes. Like, ability mm-hmm. is real, mm-hmm. but disability is not. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm a shorter than average person. Um, if occasionally I will come across a shelf in an office that is higher uh, than I can reach. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, I, most, of the, most of the time, uh, things are pretty much where I can reach. But if I was shorter than that, I would not be able to reach that, and I would require somebody else to help me, yeah. or something, or like there'd be a stool or something for me to get to a high shelf. Mm-hmm. In that context, I am disabled, mm-hmm. because somebody intentionally made a choice about where to put that shelf. Mm-hmm. If they chose to put it lower, where it was in my arm's reach, I am no longer disabled, mm-hmm. because the society has been set up to accommodate me. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you know, if to get if the public library has stairs to get in, mm. if I'm in a wheelchair, I'm dis- I'm disabled. Mm-hmm. If the there's no yeah. inherent like it's not like stairs are inherently better than a ramp in a lot of ways. <laughs> if the if we had just chosen to use ramps, that would not really be a disability. Mm-hmm. So it's it's uh there's an when. A society chooses how to arrange its world. It is yeah. making choices about who it prioritizes. I also say one other interesting thing about the silent voice mm-hmm. that might be worth doing. Getting back to our sub versus dub debate. Yeah. Um, in the English dub, they chose a voice actor who is deaf for mm. Shoko, and so what you hear in her lines, especially when she's very young, she is mimicking what it is like for a young girl who hasn't spoken a lot, mm-hmm. and you know has difficulty forming the words in a way that, you know, uh, folks who have a lot of experience with. Mm-hmm. And so you have some of the same experience of trying to understand what she's saying mm-hmm. um, the way that the kids in her class would have had. Mm-hmm. And that's an interesting take on that, where especially if you're watching it without subs, yeah. you'd be like, oh yeah, this would be, you know, again, for a group of fifth graders, mm-hmm. how do they react to that being immature? Mm-hmm. It's kind of an interesting kind of perspective there. No, that's really interesting. Yeah. But I will say that probably a good companion film if you like this is Anthem of the Heart. Oh, okay. Which is uh, about a girl who loses the ability to speak. Ooh. And, and, okay. Uh, her deal, like how the how the character, main character and the other characters around her mm. uh, deal with that. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, we are over time. We're oh, going to stop right there. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yes. Um, so, uh, cool. I hope you all found that useful. Uh, thank you for that. Um, we were going to um, be back in about 10 minutes for our next panel, um, which will be an interview with Evan Minto of Azuki Manga. This is an online streaming manga service, so um, we'll be back with that, in, as I said, in about 10 minutes. See you then.